Good morning gamers, welcome back, episode 147. Today I've got a couple big things planned. This episode is going to be all about ores, but before we can actually start talking about ores, enchanting. We're back over at the enchanting table, here we are at the skeleton farm. In the last few episodes we've been working on a skeleton farm, but not just any skeleton farm, literally the, the best, best skeleton farm that I have ever built. It's fully complete now. It's basically fully finished. On the surface, we have Haunted Skeleton Chateau. We go inside, some kind of tragedy happened, a disaster, we fall down, boom, right in the skeleton farm. And this skeleton farm, it basically has it all. An enchanting setup that gets us to level 30, an entrance, an exit, and even an on-off switch that mysteriously makes a noise. I have no clue how it works. Anyways, today's episode is going to be all about ores, but before we can do anything with that, enchanting. We're looking for a new pickaxe, a specifically Efficiency 4, Unbreaking 3. I have a lot of levels now, which means plenty of room to spare. I brought three diamonds over before the episode. Efficiency 3. Trash. Like I said, the goal is pretty simple. Unbreaking 3. Efficiency 4. Fortune 3. Okay, that's way better than I needed. That is literally perfect. That's perfect. That's it. That's perfect. That, that's perfect. That's so good. That's amazing. That was quick. Like I've said twice now, today's episode is still going to be all about ores. When I was preparing for the next big project that we're going to be starting, actually in today's episode too, I was thinking about resources. We, we need iron, like like really bad, I, I need iron. I don't know if I'm going to use it on this project, but other projects require a lot of copper. These are all of my ores that I have right now. We had to start off with enchanting because my fortune pickaxe, it's not looking good at all. Fortune three, efficiency four, that's good. Durability, 168 not good i'm poor like really really poor I, I hope i don't regret this and i hope i'm not missing an anvil anywhere but i need an anvil oh no oh no oh no what 17 levels 17 levels 25 what i mean i'm gonna have to do it eventually so you might as well that's painful we're going to be starting and finishing one of the biggest projects of this entire world in this episode and in the next episode. I can't tell you too much about it quite yet, but one thing that I can say, iron. We need a lot of iron. Knowing that I was going to need a lot of iron for this project that we'll be breaking ground on very soon here, before this episode, I went to YouTube. See, when it comes to diamonds, I've got it. Uh, at least I think I have it. Maybe not in this world, but usually I have it. I know where to find diamonds, but iron? Well, you see, iron's a little bit different. If I was looking for iron, like I am, then I wanted to know where the best spot to look for this stuff would be so I wouldn't waste any time. I couldn't really find very many up-to-date and accurate videos on it. So that's where we start. In today's video, we're going to talk about how ore generates and the best spot to find every single type of ore in Minecraft as of the 1.17 update. If you like this video or if it helps you out at all, then please consider dropping a like. Leaving a like on this video helps me out huge time. Check it out, the new and improved mine. Over here we have a bed, over here we have a new entrance, over here we have a new exit, and over here I have a crafting table. It's amazing, perfect, I know. Now if we go down here into the main mine, the one that I use all the time, I've also added something new. The other new thing is gonna be right over here. I will admit it, it looks a little bit weird right now, but it will do, it's okay. The important thing is that it works, and uh, definitely, 100% it works. It's a new and improved exit. It goes all the way up to this room right here, and then this thing goes all the way back up to where we just were a second ago. This spot right here goes right back to that room where I just was a second ago. I found a cave system over here, but the thing is, I already found this cave system. It was completely lit up. This room right here is going to be the start of one of our new mining rooms uh, for something very, very important. Before we break it down and go individually, ore by ore, let's talk about all of them. In Minecraft, an ore is a resource. <laughs> okay, unless you're an absolute potato, I'm sure you know that one. Ores, just like dirt, structures, and literally every other thing that you can find naturally in your world, generate. When you load your world or a new chunk for the first time, ores will basically attempt to generate. Different ores attempt to generate different amounts of times. Generally speaking, if an ore attempts to generate more, then most likely it's going to be more common. Most ore generation will override blocks like stone, granite, diorite, andesite, and even the new blocks, tough and deep slate. When generating, if an ore ends up replacing tough or deep slate, it's going to be the deep slate version of whatever ore we're talking about. Um, so I was setting up the mine. I was setting up the mine. I was setting up the mine. Forget the ores, forget the ores. Oh no, 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 that's not good. That's not good at all. Okay, well, yeah, that's fine. It's smooth basalt, I'll get it back. Oh, that's not good at all, but it's amazing. This is, this is, I can't believe this. This episode was going to be all about ores. And I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still going to be all about ores, but a geode, an amethyst geode, and a ravine, an insane ravine too, actually, with so much iron here. Oh, we had the jackpot. Everything is here. This is amazing. But literally, even more importantly, 
this is here an amethyst geode is here i feel really rough about actually breaking my way into this thing we're gonna have to be really careful but a geode literally right at the base that has been loaded in the whole time i bet this thing is ready to go this thing is so oh yeah 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 look at this thing it's ready to go there's an enderman here too wow that's a really good find that that is literally an amazing find that's great so that's pretty huge i was setting up a branch mine over here my plan was to make a main tunnel going right here and then hallways coming off of this tunnel and i found this thing that's literally that's huge so i'm just gonna remember where that thing is and then we'll come back to it later and do something with it the first ore that you'll most likely come across one of the most important ones and also one of the most common ores is coal coal has two main uses torches and fuel Coal is insanely easy to find. You can pretty much find this stuff like anywhere in your world. Look for almost any surface cave, go into the thing, and as long as it actually goes somewhere, you should be able to find coal. Coal generates anywhere in your world. Right now in 1.17, you'll be able to find coal generating in between Y0 and Y127. It's a giant range. Coal vans are usually pretty large. If you have Fortune, one of the best enchantments of all time, you could easily get like stacks of this stuff in no time. Right next to that coal that we found is iron. Iron's gonna be a little bit trickier to find, but it's still pretty easy to find. Just like with coal, if you go into any surface cave, you should be able to find this stuff pretty quickly. Very likely iron is the most useful resource in the entire game. Diamonds are up there too, but iron is useful for so many crafting things. Iron is also basically the first official tier. I mean, not technically, because unlike coal, you won't be able to mine it with a wooden pickaxe. You're going to need stone tier or better. But I mean, if we're talking armor tiers, then iron is basically where it starts. So iron is a little bit less common than coal. Iron generates in between Y0 and Y63. That's going to put this stuff a little bit below the surface. Sometimes you can find it exposed, but usually below the surface. Right here, we have iron. Now, right now, I'm down at Y47. This is where I'm setting up our second branch mine. I think, based off of what I was seeing, the best way to find all of the ores in Minecraft right now in 1.17 efficiently is probably going to be two branch mines. One branch mine near the middle of your world, one branch mine at the bottom of the world for the really, really good stuff. Based off of this chart, which is an official Mojang chart, right now in 1.17, ore generation is pretty consistent across the board, including for iron. If you were following the 1.17 snapshots and now the 1.18 experimental snapshots, this chart should look pretty familiar to you. We've seen it a couple times. I got this chart from the 1.18 experimental snapshot page. On the left, the future. It's most likely going to change by the time 1.18 actually drops, but the future. We don't really care about that. On the right, the smaller side, is 1.17. It has all of the ores that generate in the game, other than copper for some reason. Poor copper. But as you can see here, iron generates in between Y0 and Y63 pretty consistently. That means I don't think there's actually going to be a best layer to find iron. Now, I did a lot of research for this video. I found that some people ran experiments and found different results, but according to this chart and according to the Minecraft wiki, it should be pretty consistent. In my opinion, and from my experience, iron generation being consistent pretty much across the whole world makes sense. You can find this stuff up high, you can find this stuff down low. For coal and iron, and honestly most of the other ores in the game, it doesn't look like there's a specific best Y level to mine at, just a range that you should be in between. Some people say you should mine for coal and iron higher up in the world. It's your call. This next ore, though, definitely has the best range. Copper. Copper is a brand new 1.17 ore. Copper is a building ore. So when I was setting up this area down here at Y47, I found that first chunk of copper, which was pretty cool, pretty exciting. Then I started making a tunnel. I was just digging this tunnel a second ago. Uh, in this tunnel, I found some coal back there, some iron right there, which is cool. And then somewhere in here, copper right there. Copper, supposedly, allegedly speaking here, is most common at Y47 and 48. But there is this one weird thing. Here's the change log for Minecraft Snapshot 21W15A. It's an old snapshot that dropped back in April. This bit right here. Copper now generates between the bottom of the world and height 192, being most common around height 96. 21W15A was the snapshot where things were rolled back. That was the first snapshot after the big update split announcement happened, and things, yeah, were rolled back. But 96... There isn't very much land generating up in 96. Like, I mean, in my world, yeah, I don't have very many gigantic mountains generating up there. It, in most worlds, in 1.17, there's not much land at 96. That definitely creates a problem, and honestly, something kind of confusing. This whole copper being most common at Y4748 thing, I got that from the Minecraft wiki. Now, I'm not too sure what the Minecraft wiki source on this one is, but that's what it says. If you thought that was confusing, though, it gets more confusing. The Minecraft wiki says copper should generate in between Y0 and Y96. Going back to that 21W15A changelog page, uh, copper generates in between 
Why zero? And why 192? Which is literally impossible. There are zero blocks in Minecraft 1.17, I, I, I think that generate at Y192. Like, it just doesn't happen. The mountains aren't that tall. I looked through all of the other snapshot change logs after the 21W15A1, and I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find anything, not one single thing on ore generation, specifically copper. So I'm not too sure. If I'm gonna pick one though, I'm definitely gonna have to go with the Minecraft wiki. Seems to make way more sense. Y0 to Y96. Yeah, that's a whole lot more realistic. If we're going with the Minecraft wiki on that, we're going with the Minecraft wiki on Y4748 to be the best layer for copper. Now, so far I've been mining at Y47 and actually it kind of seems to be true. 32 copper ore right now, which definitely for sure we're going to use this brand new fortune pick on. We're going to be able to do that again and again and again on the stuff and multiply it so many times. The same with the iron, same with the coal. But yeah, apparently Y47, Y48 is going to be the best spot to mine for copper. Copper is so cool. The block literally ages. It's it's amazing for building. I hope in 1.18 they expand the stuff. But yeah, a really, really cool block that you should be able to find most commonly around the middle of your world. Which is exactly what I'm doing with this middle mining setup area. Anytime I'm looking for copper now, I'll come down to this level right here and branch mine. I'll be able to find copper ore generating in this mine and also because of the generation ranges, iron ore and coal ore as well. If I'm ever looking for the four other ores, then it's back down to the main mine, the mine that we set up a long time ago that goes way deeper in the world. Next door, gold. Gold trash. Gold is not good. If you're looking for gold, it's going to be generating in between 0 and 32. Gold is good for, I guess, powered rails, gold armor for the nether, bartering, yet yeah, definitely bartering, and throwing away. I don't like gold at all, actually, but I will admit it has two cool things about it. If you're looking for gold, you don't have to only be in the overworld. You could actually head into the nether and find nether gold ore. It's nowhere near as safe or reliable, but you definitely could do it. The other cool thing that gold ore has going for it is the fact that it's tied to biome generation. You'll be able to find gold generating in every single overworld biome, but there is one biome in specific that's better, the Badlands biome. In the Badlands biome, gold has a bigger range and is way more common. In fact, it's 10 times as common as every other biome. In the Badlands biome, you'll be able to find coal generating down low in between 0 and 32, but also in between 32 and 79. That's going to put gold generation in the Badlands from 0 all the way up to 79. You can find this stuff literally everywhere, and it generates way more commonly too. Now again, gold is not very useful, but if you need it for whatever reason, maybe bartering or just throwing out, then the Badlands is definitely going to be the best spot to look for this stuff by far. It's not even close. Back to the chart, Lapis Lazuli. To be honest, in Minecraft 1.17 and below, Lapis Lazuli is actually really, really interesting, generation-wise. So if you take a look at the chart, uh, Lapis is a little triangle instead of a rectangle. This means, unlike the other ores, Lapis definitely has a best layer. Lapis Lazuli can generate in between Y0 and Y30, but its best layer is Y15 by far. If you like to enchant or maybe build with blue colored blocks, then Lapis is crazy useful to you. If you don't like to enchant or build with blue blocks, then honestly, Lapis isn't going to be very useful to you. It's kind of sad. Lapis has been in the game forever, and honestly, it's kind of... I don't like to say it. Like, I just really don't like to say it, but honestly, it might be the least useful ore out of every single ore. Yes, even gold. I'm so sorry. Redstone is annoying, like so annoying. Anytime you're branch mining down low in your world, you're gonna find so much of this stuff. Redstone is insanely common. Redstone generates it between Y0 and Y16, literally like abundantly, like, like crazier than abundant, like if that's even possible, it, it's everywhere. It's literally everywhere. Even though it's useful, the reason I'm calling it so annoying is because it fills your inventory up. Like it literally just clogs it. If you start fortuning all of the redstone that you find while you're branch mining, you're gonna fill up your inventory literally with redstone in like no time. Now, obviously this stuff is insanely useful. I don't even have to say it's literally redstone. You could do so much with it, but it's so common. It's literally everywhere down low in your world. It's it's actually kind of insane if you're looking for redstone all you literally need to do is make like a branch mine at like y11 literally anywhere down low in your world in between like y5 and y16 you'll find it everywhere so that gets us to the last two ores there are two ores left to talk about one of them is kind of awkward one of them is insanely rare I branch mine a lot. I have been branch mining a lot in this world because I'm desperate. I branch mine all the way down at Y6. I branch mine all the way up at Y11 right now. I can't find it anywhere. I'm so desperate. Uh, diamonds. Diamonds used to be end tier. They aren't anymore, but they're still amazing. If you can get diamond gear, then you're basically set. You actually don't even need to go any farther if you didn't want to. When it comes to crafting, diamonds aren't very useful. There are a few recipes that use diamonds, but tools. Tools are the main thing. Tools and gear. So where do you find diamonds? Well, it starts pretty simple. Diamonds, just like redstone, generated between Y1 and Y16. Where do you find diamonds in Minecraft 
So it's tricky. It's honestly tricky. According to the developers and some people, Diamond Generation has not changed at all. I don't know if it's just me getting super unlucky or what here, but Diamond Generation definitely seems to have changed. Either way, though, there are basically two answers. Y11 or Y6. The benefit of branch mining for diamonds at Y11 is huge. There's going to be way less lava that you'll run into. Lava is really, really annoying, especially if you're looking for your first diamonds. You run into it. You have to get rid of it block by block or fill it in with water and its obsidian. You can't get rid of it. It's really, really tricky. Y11 was my go-to for the longest time. However, I'm actually not able to find, like, any diamonds at all in this world at Y11. At least ever since 1.17. Like, I don't know. It's really weird. I also haven't had very much luck down at Y5 either. I guess I'm just, like, completely out of luck when it comes to diamonds. Now when it comes to diamond techniques. Ho oh, ho, speaking of diamonds, how I can't find them. That's funny. That's funny. When it comes to diamond finding techniques, I've talked about a couple different techniques in this series. I'll leave some cards on screen right now, but diamonds, I didn't think we would actually do it today. Diamonds right here, we could actually fortune them too. Also, I fortuned those other diamonds that I found a long time ago, the deep slay ones, the first ones. I meant to silk touch them. Hey, look, another ravine. I did silk touch these two other deep slate diamonds though, so that kind of works. We'll leave these ones alone. There is one last type of ore, but honestly, you shouldn't mine for it. That's a terrible idea. It's emerald ore. Emerald ore is pretty cool because it's biome dependent. In 1.17 and below, emerald ore only generates in the mountains biome. If you're looking for emerald ore, your best bet is going to be in between Y4 and Y31, but honestly, it's so rare, it's like not even worth it. Like, it's literally not worth it. Just trade with villagers or something. That's the best way to get emeralds. If you find emerald ore though, you're pretty lucky. Also, technically speaking, emerald can actually generate outside of the mountain's biome. All that needs to happen for emerald ore to generate, aside from being inside of that range, is for a mountain biome to at least be partially inside of the chunk where it generates. That means technically you could find a block of emerald ore outside of the mountain's biome in, say, a jungle, if that jungle generated right next to the mountains. All of this would have to happen right at the biome border, and that mountain biome would have to be in the same chunk as the jungle biome. My Silk Touch pickaxe took a lot of durability damage today, which is pretty pain. I'm gonna have to do something about that. But Iron Ore, we found so much Iron Ore. Now in 1.17, Fortune 100% is the way to go with everything. As of this update, you can actually Fortune every ore now, which feels so good. It makes it so much easier to get a lot of Iron too. Silk Touch is great for picking up blocks and keeping your inventory clean, moving stuff back to your base or whatever, but Fortune 3 all the way 100 percent i'm actually going to go ahead and fortune all of the ores that i just mined to see what we have condense it all into blocks then we'll take a look then we'll talk about the big project but when it comes to ore generation in minecraft 1.17 that's what it is everything is changing in 1.18 with the second half of the caves and glyphs update but right now if you're watching this episode and it's like today or maybe even september you're good the final ore totals are these numbers right here. This looks really good. So I was going to condense it down into blocks, but then I thought about it. It's kind of hard to look at when it's in blocks, so I left it alone. I also decided to leave this alone, leave this alone, and I left the lapis ore alone too. Mysterious big project. So let's play a little game. Down in the comments below, take a guess what you think this project is. But, 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 but. before you take a guess, I've got a couple hints for you. It's a project that we've done before, kind of, but... Not really at the same time. Hey, by the way, I'm going to start smelting up all of the stuff that we found today. We've done this thing before, but also we really haven't done this thing before. Now, by haven't done this thing, I could mean that we literally haven't done it, or I could mean that it's just unfinished. We may never know. It's an ancient Mayan secret. Today, right now, we're going to be breaking ground on the build. In the next episode, we're probably going to finish the build and put everything that we need to get this thing to actually, you know, like, like work. It is a farm inside of the build. Whatever the project is, the goal with this thing is pretty simple. Start the whole project and finish the whole project so it's up and running. This project doesn't necessarily have to be literally the best version of what we're building. It just has to be a good version with all of the things. You know? Now I want this area, this zone over here in the taiga that we have to really start coming to life. To make it come to life, to make it all come together and feel like a proper base, I think we need to start packing the builds together. That means this build is gonna go right here, literally right behind Grim the building. I'm gonna have to lower some of the land. I'm gonna have to raise some of the land. Here we go. After all the land prep, we end up with a space like this. Hopefully this is good. This should be enough space to work with. It's a pretty big area. When it comes to the block palette for this build, I'm thinking stone, a lot of stone and other types of stone too. Oh, we've been on band again. We've been on band. Polished deep slate. Polished deep slate is gonna look great with what I wanna do to this build. 
deep slate stone bricks that's right the goal is to use every single type of deep slate on this build basalt i think i would also try and like to work basalt into the build basalt is gonna look really really nice with these deep slate blocks which means i need a basalt generator the only safe spot that i can think of to set up a basalt generator over here at least right now would be out here in the middle of the lake <laughs> so i guess that's where it's gonna go so i can never remember how this goes does soul soil go on the ground and blue ice up here or is it the other way around only one way to find out that's it that's it right there it's perfect anytime i need basalt this is where i'll go i'll come out to the middle of the lake for now and just generate basalt i think that a combination of andesite stone and maybe even stone brick walls is gonna look really nice on this build too I figured somewhere up here we would go up and do something that kind of looks like this and then maybe we could even come in here and do another thing that kind of looks like this this might look nice a little bit more of this and then there we go we end up with the section that looks like that i repeat it again and again and again and again and again three windows on both sides three is a really nice number tower in the middle tower in the middle looks cool on the tower in the middle we use some cobblestone cobblestone will look nice and on this big open side maybe we even use basalt basalt will also look very very nice so so far that's great and all everything is making sense but there is one final thing that we need to talk about before i go ahead and get a bunch of this build in and that's going to be the roof the roof is going to use two blocks stone bricks and i think maybe spruce wood i think spruce wood could look really really good on this build with all of these blocks that we're using yeah spruce wood is like the perfect block uh, another roof i'm thinking that we do a steep roof it's going to be very very tall tall is the plan this is going to be the tallest build in this area by far i started with three sections of one then two of two two of three and then finally one of five on the top that's gonna make this thing a monstrosity huge gigantic very very tall visible from everywhere even like way over there by the giant orb yeah it's gonna be tall i'm gonna do stone brick and spruce wood on there and make the roof look really really cool too which means I have a lot of building to do. What I'm gonna take on is a lot. It's gonna be a lot of work. I'm not sure if I'm going to finish the entire build in today's episode, or if I'm gonna do like a lot of it and then finish up some of the bits that we just talked about in the next episode. We'll see. No matter what ends up happening though, building, I am certainly, most definitely, going to be building now. Wish me luck. So it's been an hour and a half. I've been building for a long time. Are you ready to see it? Because here it is, the back of the build. This thing is gigantic. By far, maybe one of the biggest builds in this entire world. Oh, that's a big guy. It's huge. Like, I knew this thing was going to be gigantic, insanely tall when I was planning it out. But it's big. And looking at it in person, like, look at this thing. Yeah, yeah, did I say it's big? Because it's big. So I showed you the back side of the build, which is the least impressive side of the build. Here's the front side. I did a cool tower on the front. I built this gigantic roof. This slopes down towards the middle, and then this front one actually slopes out a little bit. The stone bit gets disconnected. I thought that was pretty cool. And I know what you're thinking. Waddles, are you going to go back up onto the roof and change the stone bricks out for mossy stone bricks? Maybe cracked stone bricks even? It would look good. No, no, I'm not. Are you crazy? It's been so long working on this build. I'm not changing anything about the roof. I think it looks fine because it's a gigantic scale build. Like this build is massive and it's going to work perfect for, for what we're going to put inside of this thing. Look at this thing compared to the chateau over there. The chateau is literally nothing. I could put it inside of this. It makes Grim right here feel absolutely tiny too. Now the build clearly isn't finished. There are uh, a few holes inside of the build, but I think it's going to be done for today. I've spent a lot of time working on this episode already. And I think the things that I need to finish up like windows, the sidewall that small bit right there the interior i honestly think those things are going to be pretty easy we can't do the interior anyways yet because i need to make sure there's room for what i'm going to put inside of the build actually inside of the build now i built this gigantic roof out of wood obviously if you couldn't tell i might add a slab in the middle but i probably am going to want to put like lightning rods on either peak and maybe even the front one too just to be safe it will be an absolute tragedy if this thing burnt down i would probably just delete the world at that point episode 147 from old board it's a beautiful build. I love it so much. And this build was actually a lot of the inspiration for what we built today. Like clearly this build is different. Tower is completely different, different roof shape. But that other build is amazing. And it got me so inspired. Let's talk about a few more things about the build really quick at the end of the video. We're going to have a front door right here. That's where I walk in and out. We're going to have a window right there. We're going to have a window up there. I'm going to put something else up there. I don't know what it's going to be. I'm going to put windows in here too. Uh, glass panes going all the way up. So we have the arch window from the outside, from the inside. It looks like this. And the ceiling, I'm thinking maybe like basalt sections just crossing and then leaving it pretty open. Maybe staircases on the bottom. Maybe not. I think it's pretty fine it's a cool shape we're gonna put something down here on the ground it's gonna work amazingly it's gonna be on the back wall uh we're gonna put something in the middle i need to figure out what i want to do right there and the side walls i was thinking maybe 
honestly, I don't have any on me, but like just cobbled basalt walls in there, fill that all the way in, and then maybe maybe a window up there or something. I'm not too sure. What are you doing up there? How did you get up there? What hey, what is that? So what do you think this build is going to be used for? Take a guess down in the comments if you haven't yet, and thank you so much for watching today's video. If you also haven't, while you're going down to the comments, make a quick stop at the like button. Subscribe too. Reitman, GBFan1984, Devince, thank you all so much for the support. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you in episode 148 or the next video. Whatever comes first, goodbye.